Today, let's take a look at something, shall we say, cozy. Like, honestly, one of the coziest films we've probably ever covered here on Cinema Nippon. Let's leave behind the politics, the violence, the uncoziness, the cursing and the shouting matches. Let's instead take a walk together, a walk through parks. Today's film, Parks, was the 2017 centennial celebration vehicle for Inokashira Park, a notable municipal park in Tokyo's Mitaka and Musashino wards. Parks was directed by Natsuki Seta, a newcomer for both the show and for Japanese filmmaking at large. Seta got her start in film by studying both Yokohama National University Graduate School of Environment and Information Sciences and Tokyo University of the Arts Graduate School of Film and New Media. While in a graduate program at the latter of these universities, Seta directed her first film for her final thesis. This film would become 2008's A Letter from Elsewhere. Only two years later, we got her 2010 big debut, A Liar and a Broken Girl, which starred Shota Sometani, who you'll remember from Himizu. With these two films in the bag alongside another feature film, an episode of the series Vampire Heaven, a short project, and a slew of music videos and television spots, we arrive in 2017, which marked the 100th anniversary of Inokashira Park's opening in Tokyo on May 1st, 1917. More on this location in a moment. First, though, let's discuss the film itself. Parks stars Ai Hashimoto of big hits like Confessions, The World of Kanako, and The Kirishima Thing, two of which you might recognize as Best Picture winners. Opposite Hashimoto, we have Shota Sometane, who we've featured several times on the channel. Rounding out the lead trifecta is Mei Nagano, who previously acted in Zebra Man 2, the live-action adaptation of Ruroni Kenshin, as well as a number of television dramas. Together, Hashimoto, Sometani, and Nagano's characters, Jun, Tokyo, and Haru, task themselves with uncovering and reconstructing a more or less lost love song from the 1960s. Essentially, Jun knew a woman who lived in the area years back, who has now passed away. Haru looks a lot like the woman, catching Jun's eye and helping the two form an initial bond. Tokyo, meanwhile, is actually related to the woman who inadvertently brought the three together. While rummaging through some old items, they uncover a recording of a love song composed 50 years prior. Not a song that was intended to top the charts, but rather one written by one person and intended for another. A true expression of love, rather than something workshopped by corporate producers for mass appeal. The three university-age adults decide to take it upon themselves to finish the song. We say finish because the recording they recover is, unfortunately, incomplete. They decide to do this for two distinct reasons. First, they wish to compose a song which they can perform for the Inokashira Park 100th anniversary celebration. Local musicians, performers, and artists are encouraged to take part, and given how important the park is to the kids, they want to give back and pay reverence. The second reason for undertaking such a massive task is their wish to reconcile the past with the present. In the process of honoring the lives and love of those who originally composed the song in question, the trio learn about themselves and their own place within the world. Speaking of their place within the world, Parks takes place in and around Inokashira Park, a real-world park located in Tokyo. Parks was actually commissioned specifically to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Inokashira Park's opening. Originally, the park was gifted to the people of Tokyo from the Emperor of Japan, and was opened on May 1st, 1917. Within the film, we see many homages to the activities available in Inokashira, whose 95 acres house a multitude of events and offerings. Inokashira Park is considered one of the best places to view the cherry blossoms in Tokyo, a sentiment that shines through during the film's opening. We also see the characters run through the park's zoo and use the swan boats on Inokashira Pond. Historically, this pond was used to supply water to the city of Edo, the name of Tokyo prior to 1868, as longtime viewers of this channel will remember. A shrine in the park is dedicated to Ben Zaiten, a water goddess who is also emblematic of luck. However, contrary to this trait, there is a legend that lovers who ride the boats on Inokashira Pond are doomed to break up due to the goddess's jealousy. 
Most people don't heed this tale, though in the film our two protagonists do ride together, and by the end of the film we're left not knowing how their potential relationship panned out. Inokashira Park is also home to many street musicians, which we see present throughout the film. This theme also obviously permeates the film's narrative as the crux of the plot deals with music and performances within the park. As an aside, the Ghibli Museum is located within the park as well, though this landmark doesn't make it into the film. Suffice it to say that, even discounting the Ghibli Museum, there is a lot going on in Inokashira Park, and Parks goes to great lengths to display as many of these attributes as possible, paying homage both to the location's history and its present-day opportunities. Throughout Parks, there are several themes that we picked up on. It might not be the deepest film, given that it was created as more of a monument than as an emotional narrative, but this in and of itself works in the film's favor. Parks is, in effect, a fictional film set in reality, grounding it in real locations and a real time period. Through playing these elements straight, Parks explores how we deal with the past, that which we remember as well as that which occurred before we were born. With fiction, nonfiction, and historical fiction, Parks does this justice by playing around with different visual and pacing styles for different time periods. In a metatextual sense, it forces us to realize how differently we treat different time periods in the same geographical area. By extension, Parks explores how we change the past to suit the present. It looks into how we rewrite history, add things to the narrative, ignore the negative aspects, and so on. This occurs literally in Parks through the handling of the love song rewritten in the modern day. Part of the struggle our characters go through is attempting to reconcile a song from the 60s with a modern audience. The trio attempt to update the song stylistically, playing around with different musical genres, as well as to add more modern sounding lyrics for the missing portion of the tune. Overall, the film explores this reconciliation between past and present in how the park itself has changed. By extension, these various changes show our relationship in the present with our forebears, their legacies, and their creations. The changes brought about by our main characters in the form of their ancient love song also touches on the final main portion of Parks, that being the art of creation. It shows how the three main kids start with a goal in mind, yet how they continue getting sidetracked. Within the film's narrative, we see this in how it takes them an extended period to restructure and finish off their semi-original song. After all, they aren't able to simply sit down and crank out a new version of the song. Instead, they attempt to do this and yet their personalities, their own pasts, their interests, and their interactions with one another, and with the park itself, keep getting in the way of completing the tune. More abstractly though, we pull back and realize we have a film about Inokashira Park, which becomes a film about the song, then a film about these three young people, then a film about them forming a band, and so on and so forth until everything comes full circle and the narrative is drawn to a close. Not since B-Movie have we seen a narrative this endlessly convoluted, though admittedly nothing can compete with that Smithsonian tier piece of art. It might not be no B-Movie, but Parks is a charming piece of filmmaking that anyone looking for a comfy, cozy narrative should find appealing. As of this writing, Parks is available for streaming on Amazon Prime, so if this video has piqued your interest, be sure to check it out. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Parks and what you think of Natsuki Seita's other work. Parks is that type of film you'll enjoy if you're looking for something to just chill out to. It's sure to warm your heart, and it's easily available right now, so be sure to give it a shot.